is a brain map. I'm Dr. Trish Lee. I'm going to explain that to you today. Okay, so we are going to talk about in this short video, three things we are going to talk about. Actually, it's four things. We are going to talk about what each of the brain mapping processes is like. How do you do it? How do you do a brain map if you were to come into my office at Lee Brain and Spine, or if you were to perform your own home brain map in the comfort of your home with me analyzing it for you and with you over Zoom. Then we are going to look at the optimal brain map pattern in both formats, office format of a QEEG brain map and home brain map. Then we're going to look at an ADHD brain map in each of those formats. And lastly, we're going to look at an anxiety brain map in the office and home formats. So buckle in, it's only a few minutes and you're gonna get so much information on what brain mapping is like. Okay, let's start with the process. In the picture on the left-hand side is my son, Seamus. And I think this is so cute because this is a couple years ago. Look how little he looks. And now he's 13 in the home picture that I took recently. And so I think it's a really cute um, picture. But here he is in the office using our computer system that we use the cap to take a brain map that shows us how every area of your brain is performing using speed. And we're gonna see it on the next slide. So we're able to gauge the information of a variety of parameters, but you come in, we put a cap on you, there's gel, so I'm squirting gel into each one of those white sensors so that we can sense how your brain is using speed in each area. The home brain map, and I love this, this is how technology works. The home brain map, you use the headband that Seamus is wearing in this picture and immediately you see your results on your tablet. When you come into the office, we upload your brain map results to a large database and it usually takes about an hour for those results to be downloaded back to us. Using state-of-the-art online platform, that information is available to you immediately now. And someone was having a problem with the idea of home brain mapping versus, you know, what we are used to traditionally coming into the office saying that, you know, in the office, it's so much better because we use big computers. We're using a full cap. We're using gel at home. You're just using and now you can use your iPhone or your tablet. We're using this sleek headband and we only have to use one sensor. That's how technology works. Technology gets smaller easier and more convenient. And the online platform that we use cost millions of dollars to develop. And we are just so lucky to be able to access that database and that platform. And of course, we still love our old traditional platform, but streamlined headband using an app where you get your results right away, that is the way of the future. Just like cell phones, they used to be huge, or phones in general, right? They used to have cords. Back in my mom's house, it was a mustard color phone with a 30 foot cord so I could talk to my boyfriend in the living room instead of in the family room with my five brothers and sisters. So now I have my cell phone that is literally a mini computer and I can do everything on technology advances. So here we have advancements in neuroscience and technology and our brain mapping system has gotten streamlined and now you can do it at home of course, with our help. Now, let me show you the information that you get from each of these. Our traditional brain map shows us the QEEG brain map. And the way that we interpret this is we see all of the brain speeds from extra slow delta, which is sleep mode, theta, which is fall asleep mode. It's the marker in ADHD, in burnout, in cognitive challenges, emotional regulation challenges, Alpha's medium speed, it's for calm. And if you're using too much of it, your brain is too calm and your get up and go got up and went. Beta is perfect processing speed for focus and high beta is anxiety mode. And this is the optimal map, meaning that it's here in the middle of these standard deviations where all of those speeds are being used beautifully in all areas of the brain, which are represented by these little circles. At the same time, we're able to look at asymmetry which is a marker of mood. And we're able to look at communication between brain areas measured in the amount of communication, which is called coherence and timing in communication, which is called phase lag.
Over here in our home brain map, although it looks different, it actually measures more parameters than you might see on your QEEG brain map. And let me tell you why. Because we're looking at the focus index, which is under task. When you come into the office purposefully, we don't put people under task because it isn't very salient and relevant the way we're able to compare the measures. So for sake of time and ease and the amount of information we get, we only perform an eyes open brain map. And sometimes we do an eyes closed brain map. Over here in the home system, using the app, it only takes 28 minutes, which is about the same time that our in-office brain map takes. It takes 28 minutes and we're able to do, because of how streamlined the app is, we're able to get your brain performance pattern with your eyes open, your eyes closed and under task. And what that shows us, and I show you, is activation. It shows how your brain is activated from rest to focus and it gives us a lot of information. If you're interested in knowing every single parameter, please check out my playlist on home brain mapping and sign up for notifications because I'm going to be putting in a lot more information in that playlist in particular. Okay, so theta ratios, we're looking at theta. Beta ratios, we're looking at beta, which counts high beta and beta here. Theta, we'll also see delta um, in some other parameters in the home brain map. So basically we're gonna get all the information from the magnitudes will be represented to you. And on top of that, we will also be looking at symmetry or asymmetry like we see here. So it's all the same measures, but now we also get task measures, timing in how you respond to a task, with your eyes open and your eyes closed. And of course, we're gonna see alpha performance. Now I will tell you, this isn't a perfect brain map. It's my brain map, my team at Lee Brain and Spine, they like to rip on me uh, because I'm always saying how well my brain is balanced usually. So here we can see a little gap in my beta and alpha performance, which shows if you watch the playlist on home brain mapping, it shows that, oops, my poor brain could use a rest. Like I didn't know that, right? So it's very indicative of what I have going on, but it's almost an optimal brain pattern where if all of this was filled in purple, the spider web, as I'm calling it, if the spider web is filled in purple, then your brain map is optimal. And you can see over here, it's hard, hard to find an optimal brain map, but this has a little bit of yellow, which also indicates a little bit of stress. Okay, so down here, we're going to look at the ADHD brain map. So you can see it's different looking. It is now, it is not all green. We see that there's elevated levels of theta in absolute and relative power, and there's lower levels in beta. That's the biomarker for ADHD. Too much theta slow speed in the brain, which is making the brain fall asleep, and not enough focus speed. And so that's why stimulant medications are prescribed to basically speed up the brain for the amount of time that the medication is in the nervous system. We see the same thing over here on the spider web home brain map. And what you can see is theta is running, the ratios are off, meaning that there's too much theta and not enough beta and beta performance is low. So this is a representation in the spider web, seeing that we have a lot of white here, especially in beta and theta, that there is ADHD in this brain. Um, so in some of these markers of asymmetry and communication, we see similarities there also. But basically an ADHD brain is too much theta, not enough beta. And again, go to the home brain mapping playlist so you can see that broken down, it's easy to see. Lastly, let's peek at the anxiety brain map and how it is different. So this is a brain map with slight anxiety, not massive amounts. When we see massive amounts of anxiety, high beta is red, it's off the charts. That's a person who has an anxiety disorder and has really been struggling with anxiety for a long time. What this map shows is beta, that focus mode, that overdrive mode is being used too much. It's a brain that isn't coming down out of that fast speed. And the way that that's represented in the spider web home brain map is that beta performance is thrown off and it's very gappy. Our spider web is not all the way out here in these last two um, sequences in beta performance because there's too much beta being used. Okay, I hope this helps you understand 
what the brain mapping process is like in the office and at home, and what an optimal brain map looks like, an ADHD and anxiety brain map, because once we know what your brain is doing, then we can set the neurofeedback systems, either in the office or at home, to reduce the magnitude of things that are being, brain speeds that are being used too much, bump up the brain speeds that are not being used enough, balance the asymmetry, get communication so that your brain performs better, which means you perform better and you feel better. Okay, now, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can get more of my videos. And as always, remember, control your brain or it'll control you.